Hey, right? It's kind of like not freezing today, which is pretty awesome. We thank God for that. So anyway, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for your goodness and your love and your mercy and all your provisions and everything you do for us, Father. Lord, I just pray that uh, everything we do this day brings you honor and glory and lifts up the name of Jesus Christ and that uh, we walk out of here loving you more and loving each other more. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, I'm assuming nobody won the $500 million lottery. Gosh, is, is it, all right, here's the struggle. Is it hot or cold in here? Okay. All right. It's okay, but let me get some circulation going on. At least circulate it. You're welcome. All right. A couple weeks back on a message called Change Your Mind. And then uh, two weeks ago, we started about changing your words. And so uh, I said uh, jokingly to Tony, I said, I think this may last six or eight weeks. He said, are you serious? <laughs> you never know. You never know. So anyway, has anybody gotten anything out of this so far? Yeah. All right, well, good. Because, you know, changing your mind is one thing, but the only way your mind's going to change is your words have got to change first. Because you can have whatever you speak. The Bible says whenever you pray, whatever you ask, believe that you have received it, and it shall be yours. That's a promise from God. He says he will meet all of our needs according to his glorious riches in heaven. That's a promise from God. His desire is to bless us. He says in Jeremiah, he says, I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, but to give you hope in a future. And a lot of us get into the place that, you know, yeah, we go through some tough times and we do hit some struggles. But here's what the Word of God says in Matthew. It says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. That means never, ever, ever. And a lot of us get into the place and situations we deal with and we forget about what God's Word says. I mean, the question you've got to ask is, well, what does God's Word say about it? And then you line up with what God's Word says. But the problem is, is that... Uh, Uncle Joe and Fred and Sister Susie are going to tell you what they think. And they're going to speak words, and their words ain't going to line up with God's word, but it sounds good, and you don't want to hurt their feelings and tell them they're crazy because you love them. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> yeah, Jason will tell you straight up you're crazy. I know. I've been there. No. Anyway. But the thing of it is is that, is that we, we wonder why we get in these circumstances and situations we say we're Christians. The Word of God says this. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because you must believe that He is and He's a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. And here's what that means in layman's turn. What scripture did I just quote? <laughs> anyway, God's plan for us is for good and He desires for us. And the things that we speak has a lot to do with the life that we live. Have you ever been around anybody that's just like negative all the time? And whenever they call, now that thank God we have a phone screening, we can, you know, choose to not talk to them and not and say, but don't lie about it, you know, just say, uh, yeah, I was busy. Well, if that's a lie, don't tell it. But anyway, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> you have the options to choose to talk to them or not to them. A lot of times as we get around people that just have negative, negative attitudes, and the worst thing that happens is that attitudes are like colds. They spread. And they will either build you up or they will tear you down, or you'll end up in the same mess that they're in. And a lot of us find ourselves in that way. But the thing of it is is that God gave us a plan. He gave us a purpose. He gave us a way to get beyond a lot of the struggles we have in earth and the struggles we have in our lives through the spoken word. It says in, in uh, Genesis that God spoke light into existence. He said, let there be light, and there was what? So we look at that plan from the very beginning of God's purpose and God putting things together is that he spoke everything into existence. And that has not changed. Even to the, the, the New Testament. Where Paul says, hey, whenever you pray, whatever you ask, believe that you have received it and it shall be yours. 
And a lot of us say, well, there you are going name it and claim it again, Pastor. Yes, I am. I'll confess I'm a name it and claim it pastor. Thank you. But here's the difference. I want to name and claim what God's Word says. It's not about what my desires are. It says, they even ask, he says, sometimes you're, you're not having things happen and you're praying because your prayer is, I think the word says, amiss. It means you're missing the plan that God and the prayer that God desires for you to have. Now, I got my eye on a Harley right now, and uh, I'm pretty excited about the possibilities, but the desires of my heart, we shall see if it shall come to pass because I can steal it in a good way. But the thing of it is, is that, you know, and, God, and here's the thing, God delights in blessing his people. It makes God happy to make us happy. Have you ever had a little kid that you gave them something and they just love it so much and they want to hug you and kiss you and all that stuff? Does that not make you happy? And you enjoy doing it. And the thing of it is, God's the same way. God wants to bless you to make you happy. God wants you to be happy. Otherwise, the fruits of the Spirit will not have been joy, goodness, gentleness, meekness, kindness, self-control, uh, peace, and love. It wouldn't be that. When you learn the heart of God, you have to understand, well, what does God's Word say about circumstances and situations? A lot of us want to go, and there's some uh, religions out there today, that they want to lean on the Old Testament. And they use the Old Testament as a way to condemn and control people. Because they scare the hell out of them. Literally. I mean, that's what they do. They put, the, it's not, it's, it's, it's an, to fear God is wise. But, but to fear God's wrath doesn't make a lot of sense in today's understanding if we know what Christ did. Because he came to take away that wrath. He come to put a level ground that those that sin, those that don't sin, they're kind of on the same thing because you may sin, but one sin's not greater than the other. God's going to love you regardless of what you're dealing with if you have accepted him. The truth of the matter is, and a lot of people don't necessarily like this way that I preach, I believe that once you've truly accepted Christ, that's secure and founded and grounded forever. A lot of people misunderstand when I say that, that you can live however life you want to live and God's okay with it. That's not true. You can live whatever life you want to live. You can call on Christ. I know a lot of Christians that have just been on fire for God before but then and, and loved God with all their heart and went through a tough time, had a struggle. And their life may not have looked exactly like what we think a Christian life is supposed to look like, which I don't know what that looks like, to be honest with you. There's really no such thing. I mean, we should... The thing that, that Christ said that's important in our lives is that, is that we love God with all our heart and love our neighbors as self. When Jesus said, and I know I repeat myself a lot, but for those that had not heard it or been here in a couple of weeks, you'll get to hear it again. Uh-huh. That's fine. Because I went too far, I forgot what it was. So the, th <laughs> but the thing is, is you know, we, 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 we say that, you know, you can... If you're truly saved, you're truly saved. Because it says salvation is what? A gift. From who? And does God take his gifts back? Now, some of us think they do. Because, you know, they, they take some of these scriptures out, out of places. Is that, uh, you know, your name will be blotted out of the book of life. Which a lot of people want to think that, well, you can... You can be born again and then you sin and then God takes your name out. Well, that's just not the truth, although it says that your name will be blotted out. It has to be in there first, right? It has to be in there. And a lot of us think, well, the minute that, you know, salvation has come to me, the thing of it is is that, you know, when Jesus said on the cross, it's finished, it's complete, it's done, it means everything that, that was going to be done, that could be done for our salvation, for our eternity was done on the cross and there's nothing you can do to earn it and there's nothing you can do to keep it and guess what else if there's nothing you can do to get it there ain't nothing you can do to lose it now here's the problem here's the struggle you're born again you go through a tough time you begin acting crazy 
And guess what? Craziness will follow you the rest of your life. And the, and the things that you're reaping, it's not because God doesn't love you. God doesn't smite people. He does chasten those who he loves. How does he do that? I'm going to tell you, a lot of people think, well, he strikes us with cancer. He breaks my leg. He makes me lose my job. He makes my finances go away. But we think that in the church, don't we? Who he chastens, who he loves. We think that, oh, that's God's chasing. No, that's, that goes against God's word. The chastening is an internal thing that he does through the Holy Spirit. That works inside of you that you that it's the GPS, it's the direction that God has you on. And when you begin to mess up, that internal GPS, the Holy Spirit will turn you back to the path. So you can get back in the right direction. God's not a vengeful God. He doesn't strike people with cancer, sickness, and disease. People don't die because they uh, sin too much. They well, they could. Depending on what sin it is they're doing. <laughs> However, you know, you get into those things and you have to understand the goodness of God. The Word of God says that, that uh, uh, God uh, does not do evil, nor does he lead someone or tempt someone in evil. Evil is not a part of heaven. Evil is not a part of God. We've got to the place that we want. And listen, there's, there's a fine line here. You you. When you're truly born again, you know it. And you can be truly born again and still go crazy. And guess what? You know it. If you don't, people will tell you. <laughs> they will affirm it for you. But even in the midst of that, if God says that salvation is a gift of God, that we receive it the minute that we ask Christ into our hearts, because I believe personally, the Bible teaches this, that whenever he said on the cross that it's finished, that salvation was released to humanity, even to those ISIS people. Salvation was released to the entire world. Otherwise, he could not have said it was finished. There would have to be more to be done, but yet he said it's completed. I believe that salvation was released to the entire world. I believe that the word of God, that, that, that every name found in the book of life, every person born that lives forever is placed in that book. And you have two choices. You can either receive the gift that he gave you or you can reject it. When you reject it, that is blotting out, taking out. Your goodness can't get you in. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> We'd all be in tough shape, wouldn't we? But we have to understand God's word is God's word, and it's God's word, and it's always God's word, and it's always going to be God's word, and it doesn't change. The pro our understanding may uh, be a little off or amiss, but the Word of God, even for that, says, and all you're getting, get what? Get understanding. Get knowledge. Get understand, and means to understand the Word of God. Without faith, it's impossible to please God because they must believe that He is. And He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. And, and you know, the thing is, you have to believe that every word that He speaks here is true. You have to d dig into God's Word and find out. If you don't know the answer to a, a question, seek it out in God's Word. It'll be there. If you're struggling because you've just been diagnosed with cancer and they say you're going to die or you've got a year and a half to live, you've got a dilemma right now. I call it a crisis of belief. Because you've got to decide, okay, am I going to line up with what God's Word says or am I going to believe what the doctors say? Well, yeah. Amen. And, and here, God's word says, I've come to give you life and life to the full. And we think, well, maybe it's God's will for me to get sick and die of cancer. What well, people, church, believe that. Some of y'all believe that here today. Some of you are shaking a little bit because you're like, man, this guy's crazy. I am. I'm crazy for Jesus. But I want you to get, and all your, yeah, and all your, right. That's yes, good. Thank you. 
And all you're getting, get understanding. And if you understand whenever he says, you know, that, that he's loved you with an everlasting love, that he doesn't, you know, um, strict people with diseases. Jesus said this. He says, I only do what my father shows me to do. That's the only thing he can do. He can't do anything that God hasn't shown him to do. So we look at the life of Jesus. Number one, you've got to study the life of Jesus and know what Jesus did. I don't see anywhere that Jesus struck anybody with leprosy or disease. Or get this, guys. I can't find anywhere that he struck somebody with poverty. Listen, you're... Well, he gives people options. Remember the young ruler that... You know, said, well, what must I do to inherit heaven? And he says, will you keep the law? He said, I've kept the law since I was a child. He was a good boy. He could do the law. And he thought that was going to impress Jesus. And here's the thing. Jesus didn't say, you're crazy. You had not kept the law. I know you had not kept the law. He said, well, that's a good thing. It's a good thing you've done that. If you want to follow me, he says, sell everything you got and give it to the poor and come follow me. But he didn't realize the richness that he would have walking with Christ. So he walked away. And here's the thing that, that, that is, a, is a teaching point for the church. In other words, he rejected Christ because he had much wealth. In other words, he was saying that the money is my God. And Jesus didn't say, well, whoa, 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 wait a minute, you. Hey, come back here, rich feller. He, 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 you didn't clearly understand the question. You didn't understand the statement that to sell everything you got. Let me explain it to you a little better. He didn't say, let's sing another verse of almost persuaded. You know, he, he let him go. And, and it's a sad thing that, that this guy encountered Christ and all he was saying, he wasn't saying that I want you to be broke. He's what he is saying, I want you to be rich, but here's the deal. Your God is your stuff. And the word of God says, have no other gods before me. If anything is above God, it's, 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 it's idol worship. Your words will determine your test, your testimony, your destiny. The things you speak will determine where you end up. I've, I've heard people speak curses over their kids. And, and sometimes you're in Walmart and you see a kid and you're like, boy, that kid's going to bust hell open one day. But that's not true. And sometimes parents speak stupid things like that over their kids. And all you're doing is speaking a curse over their life. And you're going to have, they'll have a choice in their life at some time to either re, to accept it and walk out in it or reject it. Luckily, in most of our lives, we reject some crazy things that people have said. And it says the word of God also, it creates power. It has creative power. When God said, let there be light, what happens? It created light. Whenever you say, well, the doctor told me I'm going to die because I'm sick and the cancer's un uncurable guess what you're going to die because the doctor told you that you're going to be sick and it's not curable or you can line up with what god's word says i've come that you have life and then he taught us to pray the perfect prayer this is called the perfect prayer you can learn everything from this prayer our father which art in heaven acknowledge where he is he said let it be on earth as it is in heaven. Was Christ speaking God's will or not? He had to be. He was Jesus. He said, let it be on earth as it is in heaven. And everything we understand about heaven, I can't find sickness, disease, disability, canes, walkers, and any of those things in heaven. It's, it talks about a newness that we're renewed. We put on our spiritual man, a new man. If many of you saw the, uh, the show, but -da -ba -da -ba -da, Heaven is for Real, about the little kid that you know, the one thing he he uh, recognized his grandfather, but his grandfather wasn't that old man in the picture. He was that young man that that his dad knew. Because God does creative works, 
And in heaven, there is no sickness, no disease or anything like that. If that's the case, I don't want to go. And so when we see that uh, we look at the Word of God and, and it says, let it be on earth it is in heaven, well, then that means that that's God's desire for heaven to look like earth and earth to look like heaven. And that means that it's not God's desire for you to be sick. I got another thing to tell you too here that you may not like, but I don't care. But I love you. God don't want you broke. I mean, if you think God wants you broke, you're going to hate heaven. I'm serious. What are the streets made out of? The gates are what? Uh-huh. And the walls are jasper and all kinds of things. I mean, the picture of heaven is this place of, that exudes wealth and prosperity. Well, God doesn't want me to be successful. He doesn't want me to be rich. Well, you keep believing that. And listen, rich is not always about what you've got in your bank account. There's a lot of people that's, that's broke spiritually that need uh, to win a spiritual lottery. If that was not the case, then why would people like Kurt Cobain had everything, success, money, why would he kill himself? He wasn't, he didn't, he didn't have wealth. And listen, here's the thing you need to understand. The enemy can give you wealth. You need to understand that. But only God can give you a blessing. And if I have to choose, I can walk in the blessings of God and drive a used car. Or I can have the wealth of Satan and drive a Bentley. A lot of us would have a struggle making that decision. Yeah, I'd, I'd rather have the used car because a used car that's blessed is better than a Bentley that's, that's, that breaks all the time. Just a question to go look at. I mean, uh, Lamborghinis, Ferraris, $100,000 plus. And everybody, oh, I'd love to have one. Well, yeah, I'd love to have one with a Chevrolet engine in it. <laughs> I'm serious. You know what it you know what it costs to fix those things? Ten thousand—I mean, the uh, uh, the uh, ten thousand, the ten thousand mile maintenance on a Ferrari is fifteen thousand dollars just to do maintenance. Just because it looks expensive, it is expensive. It doesn't mean it's a blessing. It's more of a blessing for me to be able to get in my old 72 truck, turn the key, and it cranks up, and I can go to the dump and dump stuff than it is for me to sit in a Lamborghini that doesn't run because it costs too much. So perception of wealth is, is, is really different. From a Christian perspective, you may not have a lot of money in your bank account, but you're wealthy. Because, you know, the blessing of God is following you everywhere you go. The, actually, the blessing of God will go before you if you'll just follow it. A lot of us won't follow it because we won't speak it. We won't believe and receive it. And you've got struggles in your life that you're dealing with. You can't keep saying, well, I'll never get over this, or I can't get over this, or I can't do without this. No, you've got to keep speaking the truth and the life over your life and your situation that, yes, I can. I can overcome this. Yes, it's a struggle, but, Lord... By your will, by your way, by your strength, I believe that I'm coming out of this. Not only that I'm coming out of it, that I'm already out of it. If you've ever had cancer, and I've told a story, my story several times about having cancer, and that the only thing that kept me going was when the doctors told and told my wife that I was going to die if I didn't have surgery, and she's buried a lot of pastors. Somebody gave me a, a tape by Kenneth Copeland, my favorite preacher in the world, but they gave it to me, and what Kenneth said... You got to speak life. You got to believe that God. You have to believe that God doesn't want this sickness on you. He said, "Let it be on earth as it is in heaven." He desires it that there's no sickness there. So you've got to believe it and receive it and walk out in it. And you got to speak it. And every day, I begin to thank God. God, I thank you that I'm healed. I didn't care what the what my uh, the symptoms were. The symptoms are irrelevant to your healing. By His stripes, you have been healed. Past tense. 
let it be on earth as it is in heaven. There's no sickness in heaven. So I had to get in alignment with what God's word says and realize that it's not God's desire for me to die of cancer. It's not God's will for me to die of sickness and disease. But here's the thing. You've got to get to the place that you believe what God's will is, but you have to know what God's will is before you can speak God's will. You've got to line up with it. And if you look, again, look at the life of Christ. Never struck anybody with sickness, disease, or poverty. If he needed money, he'd go catch fish. He said, there's some gold in that fish in the mouth. You go get it. Today, it would have a whole different meaning. You gotta go get them grills. <laughs> fish with grills. Grills and gills. Anyway, that's kind of funny. But our words has creative power in our life, and we have to begin to speak and realize that, that God honors the words that come out of your mouth positive or negative he will honor that you got to choose life i chose to listen to those cds every day every day of my life i listened to those things till i got it in my spirit that i knew that it wasn't god's will for me to die of cancer and i knew that even though sometimes we would go and the reports wouldn't be too good it looked like maybe we were going backwards i keep saying thank you god and I'm healed. Your word says I'm healed. I believe it and I receive it. It's mine. And I could have I could have given in and just went along with it and just I don't guess I'd be here probably. But you have to know the will of God and understand that it's his will for life. And you have to speak it, believe it and receive it. The only time I let go of a person that's sick hospice or whatever i will stand with you to the end however far you want to go i was telling a story about a couple weeks ago about uh, uh, jeff john's wife said she was going to die basically it looked like she was in intensive care there's no way she was going to come out they were trying to prepare them for her death and i said well let's prepare for her life and i asked her the question wanda what do you want Because it matters what she wants. And she was still, she still had the fight in her. Sometimes you go through sickness and disease and it's just, it, it just wears you out. And you get to the point, it's like, you know what, Lord, it's better, better for me to go right now. And you know what, I'll agree with you if that's where you want to be. But if you want to stand and fight it, I'll stand and fight with you. She says, Pastor, I don't want to go. I said, then we're going to stand in agreement that you're going to live and you're going to walk out of this in your own power. She's back home, walked out in her own power. When the doctor said she would die, what was the difference? The difference was that she spoke life into her own life because that was the life that God gave her. Now, if a person wants to go, I'll, I'll let them go. I mean, I'll, I'll pray that God just issues you out. If that's, and I understand that. I understand it. My buddy Dave Hampton, fought a good fight but when he said pastor I'm just tired I just want to go home I'm like okay Dave I didn't want to I didn't want him to leave I want him to get healed but when you get to the point that your spirit is not wanting to fight that battle it's not it's it's the place that the blessing that God gives you it says that he won't put more on you without giving you a way of escape and sometimes that way of escape is just say, Lord, I've studied your word my whole life. I know what your word says. I, I know the goodness of heaven. I think I want to go ahead and choose that if that's okay with you. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if a person wants to fight, I've never seen a person die of sickness or disease that wanted to fight. Never. have never seen it. I have seen those that have put up a good fight and they said, I'm just tired. Positive words will bring health and happiness to your life. If you keep speaking, believe it. I want to go through some scriptures right here so I can get us further than I've been in the last three weeks on this deal. Proverbs 15, 23 says this, a man finds joy in giving and apt reply. 
And how good is a timely word? You ever had a rough day and you just was going, it was just tough and somebody just happened to speak into your life or just said something and it was something that encouraged you? Just That's just all you needed, just that little, just to get you over the hump, just to get you to that place of trusting God again. All through the Bible, it talks about us speaking. Proverbs 12, 25 says, An anxious heart weighs a man down, but a kind word cheers him up. And sometimes you've got to, to, you've got to speak your own kind of words to you. God, it's, it's your will for me to live and not to die. You said that by your stripes I am healed. If I am healed, I am healed. It doesn't matter what the symptoms are, the circumstances are. My healing is paid for. Proverbs 1530 says this a cheerful look brings a joy to a heart and good news gives health to the bones proverbs 15 4 says a tongue that brings healing is a tree of life but a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit i mean the power of life and death is in the tongue and those who love it will eat of its fruit Proverbs 25, 25. Like cold water to a weary soul is good news from a distant land. Sometimes we just need to hear some good news. My hope is I don't want ever, anybody ever to walk out of this place feeling worse when, when they leave than they did when they come in. Because if you do, you didn't catch something or you caught something you need to get rid of. Proverbs 12, 15, 18 says, Reckless words pierce like a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Tongue of the wise brings healing. So how important is it, the words that we speak? You've got to speak life. There's a song we sing, speak life, speak life. Why do we sing that? Because we need to speak life. We may be, it doesn't, and it really doesn't matter what your circumstances, situation is, you've got to begin to speak to it from God's perspective, not from your perspective. You've got to, but you can't speak from God's perspective until you know his perspective. And today I've tried to give you some clues into that. You may be going through stuff. You may be struggling with stuff. You can choose to keep walking in it and, and just accept that this is the way it's going to be, or you can choose to do something different. You know what the, the definition of insanity is. It's doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result. Well, guess what? I got some news for you. You keep doing the same thing over and over again, you're going to get the same result over and over again. Nothing's going to change till you decide to change. Your life is not going to be blessed until you believe that God wants to bless you. You're not going to get healed until you believe that God wants your healing. You can speak all these terrible things, and, and I, I, I can't even stand to be around negative people. I just don't want to hear no negative stuff, man. I know this sounds crass, but don't come and throw up on me. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I love you in the Lord, but just keep, you, keep it down. You throw up on somebody else. Don't come throwing up on me. And here's, here's a few things. I'm going to close with this, and I'm going to finish up this week. Praise God. Parents have authority to bless or curse their children. And you need to understand that. You've got to get a hold of that. Ephesians 6, 1 through 3 says, says this. Children, obey your parents uh, in the Lord, for this is right. He says, honor your father and your mother, which is the first commandment with promise, so that it may be well with you and that you may live a long time. Uh, life on earth. Some of us have heard in our lives, our parents, one of our parents say, you know, you're good for nothing. You're not going to amount to anything. He'll be lucky if he has a job empty and trash. He's never going to amount to anything. She's never going to make it. They say tough things like, she's too stupid to ever get ahead. And a lot of us have either 
heard those words or heard somebody speak those words or know somebody that spoke those words. When you speak that, you're just speaking curses over their lives. Because you're trying to instill failure into their life. And let me tell you something. A parent, I mean, a child will believe a parent, whether it's good or bad. I love my dad. I'm glad he got saved before he died. But his favorite saying to me was that, uh, because, I, man, I was a dreamer. Man, I was a dreamer. Man, I always had, man, I was always dreaming about this, that, and the other thing. I'm, there was nothing impossible to do. You know, i never forget one day we were at the whale. How I many of you guys got a whale? Yeah, but I had, sometimes well water's good, sometimes it's not, but we had some good well water. You ever had the well water with the gourd that you'd fill up and drink out of the gourd? Ain't nothing better than that. And I was sitting there, and we was drinking some of that water one day, and, man, it was good. And I said, Dad, you know what? I said, if we could sell this stuff for a dollar a gallon, we could be rich. He said, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. What if he'd have said, you know what? You might have a point there. I'd be the water king. They'd call me the water boy. <laughs> yeah, that's right. But, 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 you know, it was always, you know, and, but his favorite saying to me was, well, yeah, and you might uh, mess yourself and fall back in it. And I cleaned it up. And, you know, I, I, I was just such a hard-headed kid that it didn't matter what people said. I just wouldn't, I didn't, there was no limitations. You could, you could say anything you want to. I don't care. I'll build me a rocket ship. And I'll be a, an astronaut. Or whatever. You can bless your children by just blessing them. Sometimes they need correction. Sometimes they need that tail tore up. Don't send me no letters about that, Lord Jesus. <laughs> My philosophy is if you need your tail tore up, I'm going to tear it up. If you want to call the cops, you go ahead and call them. And, and you can tell them to get here because you're going to need it. You might as well call the ambulance too because somebody's <laughs> going to get hurt. I'm just joking, sort of. Thank you. You know me. But here's what you got to do. Here's what you got to do. Here's what you've got to do. You've got to do this every day of your life. You've got to avoid speaking evil words. You've got to uh, avoid speaking uh, junk into your own life, into someone else's life. Ephesians 4, 25 through 29, I'll close with this. It's kind of lengthy, so it's probably up on there so you can... He said, therefore, laying aside falsehood, it says, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry, yet don't sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. Do not give, do not give, do not give the devil an opportunity. Shut him down. And, and, the, and the inference of that is, is that if, if you're speaking, if you're being angry in sin and you're treating people bad, you are giving the devil an opportunity. The Word of God said he's under our feet. If he's in your face, you're the one that moves, not him. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing his, with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with one who has need. God gives you seed to meet a need. He gives seed to the sower. Let no unwholesome words proceed from your mouth, but only, 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 only such a word that is good for, 
I want you guys to get this because you got people in your life and some people are, think they're super spiritual or maybe they're prophetic and all this other stuff and they come want to speak things in your life and they speak curses and they think, well, you know, God's going to smite you and you're going to do this and this all and that negative stuff. Listen, if somebody comes to you and they start speaking negative over your life, you need to get rid of them because they ain't from God. And it may be your mom or your daddy, whatever. They are not sent by God. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only a such a word that is good for edification. What is edification? Building up according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear it. Some of us need to repent because there's some, you speak some crazy stuff out of your mouth over people. And you say things that, 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 uh, if somebody ever asks you, well, maybe it's God's will for you to die. I think it's God's will that, you know, I've lived my life as his will for me. No, it's not his will. That's unwholesome talk when you speak against God's word. Concerning life, concerning wealth, concerning anything that you begin to speak it. And somebody comes speaking anything other than edification to you other than building you up. Now, now don't confuse edification and correction. The people who love you, they'll, they'll, they'll tell you where you're messing up, but they'll also show you the solution. They may start out with a, 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 a criticism that's, that's, desi- that's deserved, but they'll end up with an edification that shows the way out. So speaking words have purpose and meaning and above everything, they have power. And I don't know who it is. This is hitting somebody in the head hard today. I mean, it's just, I just know it in my spirit. Somebody's like, McFly, you need to get it. And some of it may be, you may be speaking it over your children. It doesn't mean not to correct your children, but it does mean that you don't tell them they're stupid. You don't tell them they're not going to amount to anything. You don't tell them that they might mess themselves and fall back in it. You may not, you don't want to tell them that that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. And the same thing works just as children. You don't want to do that to your, your brothers and your sisters, those in the body of Christ. We say one thing here, and, and this has become uh, just a standard, if you want to call it, is that in this, in this church, if you want to judge somebody, you start with yourself. You judge yourself first. And when you get yourself all straightened up, then maybe, maybe then you might be able to speak into someone's life. But if someone's messed up and they come to you and they said, I need... I need you. I need. I need a word. Then you. Then you go to God and you and you seek God's word and you speak life over them, no matter what they're going through. Don't condemn them for the sin that they're in. Well, no wonder you're in it. You're acting like a dang doo doo. Whatever you crazy thing. What do you expect to happen? No, but you can say. You know. I know that God loves you. And I know he doesn't want those things for you. But there's a better way. Oh, by the way, it says that in the Bible in uh, St. Corinthians 12, last verse. He says, let me show you a better way. Let me show you a better way. Let me show you a better way. Paul says, though I speak with the tongue of men and angels and I have not love, I'm just a clanging symbol. Though I know all mysteries, it doesn't do me any good. I could sell everything I have and give it to the poor. If I do it, if not out of love, then it's useless. He says, there remain the three things, faith, hope, and love, and the greatest of these is love. And that is the, if you had one word that would describe God, the church, the Bible, it would be love. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whoever would believe in him whoever would accept what Jesus did for him would never perish but they'd have everlasting life 
I'm going to ask every head to be bowed, every eyes closed. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Lord, first, we just want to come and thank you for letting us be in your house. Letting us sit in a place that we can just encourage one another, build one another up. Stand with those that are struggling and help those that are hurting, Father. Lord, help us. Watch our tongues. Because it starts in the mind and we begin to think. And Lord, let us be an encourager. Let us lift people up. Let us get down where they're down and build them up. Lord, let us know your word so much that we don't question that we're speaking your will, but that we know that we're speaking your will. Lord, the word of God says, power of life and death is in the tongue. Let us speak life. 